Hello, today I will be showing you the basics of hydrocarbons, naming and drawing organic molecules. Their generic formula. These hydrocarbons appear in the form CXHY, where X and Y correspond to the number of atoms. Starting with the carbon atom, the root names, which we use to name the carbon atom, is based on the number of carbon atoms. So here below I put a chart of how we name the carbon atoms. When there's one carbon atom, we use the term meth. So meth is 1, eth is for 2, prop is for 3, but is for 4, pent is for 5, hex is for 6, hept is for 7, oct is for 8, non is for 9, and dec is for 10. So a molecule with 6 carbon atoms, so such as C6 and then HX, random number, would begin with the term hex. So what about the hydrogens? There's a different system of naming based on the relation of hydrogen to carbon atoms, basically their proportion to each other. There are three major groups, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. And so when we name these structures, we only take the number of carbons, the root name, and then add the proportion in which they appear. So either ain, ein, or ein. So like methane, or methene, or methine. I'll show you how these proportions appear later in the video. So when drawing the structures, each carbon can sustain up to four bonds. And what I mean by that is, so if we have a carbon atom, the most it can bond with is four bonds. Or sometimes we can have a double bond and it would look like that. So mainly carbon atom can have a maximum of four bonds, whether to hydrogen or to another carbon atom. So our first group is the alkanes. They have the general formula or the proportion I was discussing earlier of x to 2x plus 2. So for every 1x, we multiply that x by 2 and add 2 to get the number of hydrogens. The alkanes are a saturated hydrocarbon group, meaning that every carbon has its maximum bond potentials. Each carbon has all four bonds filled. So one example is methane, CH4. And the structure appears as a single C atom, which we see there's only one C and four H's, one carbon and four hydrogens. So one carbon and four hydrogens. You can see here that when I say saturated hydrocarbon, this is a perfect example. All four bonds are taken up. There is no lone pair. There is no lone bond. There is no bonds missing. So everything is full for this carbon atom. Same thing with ethane. Notice here, anes at the end, which tells us that these are part of the alkane groups. And so ethane, as another example, has two carbons and six hydrogens. If for some reason we were given just the two carbons and we knew that it was an alkane group, we could take these two carbons, multiply it by two, and then add two, which would give us the six hydrogens. And so the general structure of this would be a single carbon bond between another carbon surrounded by hydrogens, such as that. And as you can see once again, this is a saturated hydrocarbon group. Each carbon is bonded to its maximum bonding potential. There are no lone pairs or bonds left out. The next group is the alkenes, the ene group, as we call them. They have the general formula of CXH2X. So for every one carbon, we multiply that by two to get the amount of hydrogen. Their name comes from having at least one carbon double bond, so one double bond between the carbon atoms. They are known as unsaturated hydrocarbons because not every carbon is bonded fully. One example is propene. Propene has the formula of three carbons for every six hydrogens. So if we were just given the three carbons, we can deduce that since it's an alkene, we need to multiply the amount of carbons by 2 to get the number of hydrogens. So that would be C3H6. The structure of this is C with a double bond, because it's an alkene, 
with another carbon atom and another carbon atom because there's three carbon atoms and then there are six hydrogens so each carbon gets surrounded by hydrogens remember that carbons can only form a maximum of four bonds here you can see we already have two bonds so thus we can only fit two hydrogens here and so for the next one as you can see we have three bonds here one here and two here so we can only fit one hydrogen in this spot over here in the last one we have three more empty bonds because carbon can have a maximum of four bonds which we can use to fill in with the hydrogens so now if we count we see we have the six hydrogens and the three carbons and the one double bond over here same thing with butene now I will be looking at this one over here first so we knew this is butene because if we went back to the prefixes we see that four means but and since we see that four is multiplied by two to get eight we know that this is part of the alkene group and we add the ene at the end so that would be butene and that's how we would get the name in the first place so the structure for butene consists of a double bonded carbon atom with another carbon atom and another two singly single bonded carbon atoms so one two and that would give us the four carbons now we have the eight hydrogens and we know that we can only give a maximum of four bonds here so we have that and that so that's one two three four maximum of four bonds on this carbon atom and since this one has three bonds we only need to add one more for this one we can add two more bonds and for this one we can add three more bonds and then we can just fill these in with hydrogen atoms throughout okay so how do we know where these double bonds go we use a very simple method called counting we start by finding the longest carbon chain the longest number of carbons in a straight line then we start from the side closest to the double bond and we count the number of bonds up to the double bond and we will write that number before the name of the compound or the hydrocarbon so I will be using butene for this example four carbons for eight hydrogens this is an ene group so it will consist of a one double bond I'll only draw the carbon chains at this point and I will put the bonds for hydrogens but I will not write the hydrogens in so I'll start with the first one carbon with a double bonded carbon single bond carbon single bond carbon okay so there's the four carbons and then we can add the eight hydrogens there's four in there add one more in there there's two in there and then there's three in that one so this is one way to write it so as we said we find the longest carbon chain which is this section right here it's pretty much the only carbon chain here but if there were more than one carbon chains, we would use the longest one. And we start from the side closest to the double bond, which for us would be this side right here. And the first double bond is on the first, is really the first bond. So we call it 1-butene. And that's how we know double bond appears in the first bond, starting from the side closest of where the double bond is. So if we were to write this in a different fashion, such as this way, we would start from the side closest to the double bond. And since this, the double bond is in the middle, it does not really matter which side we start on. So I'm going to start from this side, and I'm counting one, two. So there's two spaces up to the double bond. So this molecule would be called 2-butene. If the double bond were to appear at the end of the chain, we would still start from the side closest to the double bond and we will count one and it would still be considered a one butene and so the only difference between these two is that these are only flipped our last group is the alkynes they have the general formula of cx h2x minus two so for every one carbon we multiply that by two and subtract two to get the h's these types of carbon bonds contain one triple bond or at least one triple bond and they are also unsaturated hydrocarbons one example is propyne which is C3H4 so three carbon atoms and four hydrogen atoms so we we'll write that as C a carbon atom with the triple bond and another carbon atom 
with a single bonded carbon atom. And here's a hydrogen. And we need three more hydrogens. Okay, so that is our structure for propyne. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something new today.